Hello and welcome back. I'm Shelf Unit and this is my continuing let's play of Underrail. So we are going to go around opening the gate controls. Um, let's swipe across the panel. Authenticating Welton, P Bridges, authorizing. Authorization failed. Outdated implant security model version. Please report to the medical office and other residential terms for necessary implant updates or replacement. Okay. So let's go to this computer. Welcome P Bridges. Unable to connect to ASIN. Only local data is available. Medical records. Todd Newman. Todd Angus Newman, height 175, weight 99 kilos. That's he's pretty big. Major allergies: aspirin, dust, and nickel. So he has the average, low to average, low average testosterone, low free testosterone, decent beta ostradiol. And acceptable SH binding globulin. Let's go medical records. Yeah, okay. Notes, medication synthesis unit reminder. Bullhead focus stim for ADD, third eye perceptual disorders, hyperbaric cognitive disorders, physical disorders, jumping beam, twitch reflexes. Someone available handmaiden, no available handmaidens, contact active security, please try again later, exit. Let's take a look down here for the power substation unit, you see the levels for the whole station here. Gate control here. That closes that. Gate control here and gate control here. Let's open this one up so it makes it going around easier. Why can I not get into there? Box, gate control, gate control, sign. Um. Gate leading to Abyssal Station Zero's research and development done cannot be opened with Phil Bridges microchip implant. Find another way or another implant. Hi Todd. Hey, do you have a microchip implant in your hand? His eyes give you the answer as soon as he looks at his outstretched right hand. I, uh, I have father coming. I have to go. I have to exercise. I need you to unlock the gate to the R&D dome for me. R research? No, 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 no. I can't go there. You're going to use, unlock the damn gate or else I'm going to rip your arm off and use it myself. I'm asking you to unlock it. Not go in there with me. He shakes his head. Mother and father told me not to touch it. I can't touch it. Why not? It's forbidden. I'm going to unlock the damn gate or else I'm going to rip your arm off and use it myself. Ah! <coughs> Excuse me. He flinches, raising his arms instinctively to shield his face. You grab him by the arm and pull him towards you. 
He slams into you with his bold body and escapes your grip. Oh my god. Do I have to go and find this idiot now? Really? 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 Where's this idiot gone? Really? I have to do this? I have to go and do this. Oh my god, where is this twat? Really? Should have just shot him in the first place. Bye, Todd. Fuck's sake. Honestly. Some people. Use Todd Severan. Authenticating. Well done, Todd. A. Newman. Authorizing. Okay. Quick save. Find out where we are now. Lots of stuff here.
here that I can't access. Material for fibre of clothing, basalt fibres are highly resistant to transparent metallic glass, micro alloy comprised of. Okay. Power, of course. Power. has power. More hacking, hey? Jesus. It's stuck, you've learned. Okay, get up the little bum. Buy some milk. Do I need a crowbar? Probably need a crowbar. Which I don't have. See you in a bit. Just going to dump stuff off. Okay, and we're back. work on this? No. How do I... Fair enough. Okay, so that opens that up. Ah, oh, okay, I've got more stuff down here to go to. Okay, again, see you in a bit. Biotic environment combining conventional agriculture with hydroponics making aquaponics. Okay, so this is more of a maze level. Charge 
you up. Keep on going for a bit if there's any danger. Power. Nothing in this locker. Box. I'll do the box computers later. Oh, that's handy. Sense canisters in the manufacturing dome. Medical cabinet. Excellent. Gate control here. No power. That's not oh, brilliant, but can we get to there? I don't think we can get to here. Maybe we can. No. Okay, I'll be back again once we have uh, dumped off stuff. See you in a bit. Okay, and we're back with these computers between the R&D and the remaining submarines and the subspheres. Oh, we can't actually. Okay. Gate control, gate control, gate control, gate control. Can we do gate control stuff down here? Yes, we can. God damn, all this stuff. So where, how, let's uh, actually let's try this one, this one isn't, it's got no power I think, no it does have power now. This one has no power, this one does. still has no power. Okay, control, locker, okay, control. Did I not come up here? I must have done. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Okay, so finally we get our way up to here. Right, let's recharge the hacking. Take some more strength medicine in the bison. That's a lot of hacking. This will go to 156 though. Bucket load of stuff in that box. Bucket load of stuff in there. What am I carrying weight wise now? Too much. Do I have. I can get rid of one of those, pop that in there. Oh, this will be acorn, won't it? Right, I'm going to go back, dump stuff off, and then I'll be back and fight with the acorn device, or whatever this weird purple glowing stone is. Okay, so now we are, we're at whatever this thing is. I'm going to go work my way around it. has no power, computer has no power, gate control has no power, it's a giant serpent devouring a radiant sphere, yet. Or any of this stuff. Just going to collect. Ooh. Interesting. Grossly oversized hearts with electrodes attached to them. Delightful, hey? Massive dried up human brain. That is, has no power. Again, I have a tremendous. Go to this power grid here. Power substation unit. Turn the power on. Let's go down here, turn the gate control. Shit sticks. Right, 
And what is mine? Mine is an assault rifle, 9 meg Hazar, 17 to 65. Okay, I'm gonna make. Um, well, you know what's gonna happen now. I shall be back in a minute. And the strong man head has got burn marks that rise from the neck and spiral towards the top of the head. They give me a faint purple glow. Let's just take everything that we can. Computer over here, what does it actually say? Shadow waves on living tissue. Okay. Right. You know the drill? We're going to be back in a second. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we are back here now. Oh, this episode has already been over an hour for me. And it has probably been less than a quarter of an hour for you. So, I haven't been in the medical car for some reason. Of course. Oh, super health hypers. Loving it. Um, so let's have a look at the. Okay, I've done those computers. Looks like a head scanner or maybe a projector of some kind. A lot of exposed cabling mismatch to makeshift components and otherwise clear signs of an ad hoc approach to constructing and modifying this device. Unable to connect ASIN, only lack of data available, some unavailable servant, no available servant. Documents, shadow waves, psycho projection carts, standard, no perceptible, blah 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 blah, frequencies of higher than 60 hertz are dangerous, shadow dust inhalation current. Ooh, that sounds absolutely horrifying. Delightful. I'll read it anyway. So, uh, infra not less than 0 0.5 hertz, no perceptible stimulation and no short term effects. 0 0.5 to 3 hertz, faint distant oral beat in the range of 5 to 15 beats per minute, no visual stimulation. Theta, 3 to 8 hertz, deep stimulation of unconscious cognition, inductive reasoning, memory recollection, creativity, association, language, etc. 8 to 12 hertz, sense of great relaxation and loss of sense of time and spatial awareness. Beta, Oh, there was alpha, beta, 12 to 38 hertz, lucid audio visual hallucinations, gamma, 38 to 42 hertz, increased analytical cognitive performance, deductive reasoning, complex problem solving, etc. Upsilion, 42 to 60 hertz, increased psionic performance across most disciplines, exhausting for non-psionic subjects, severe headaches in extreme cases. 560 are considered dangerous, <sighs> should be used with psionic subjects whilst exercising extreme caution. Shadow dust inhalation, shadow wave frequencies, less infra, point, less than 0 0.5 hertz, sense of amicular motion inside head and abdomen. That's a wormy. Uh, vermis, I believe, is either French or possibly Latin for worm. Mild headache and intestinal pain in approximately half the subjects, 0 0.5 to 3 hertz. Violent panning in ears, sometimes accompanied by hissing, growling, and screaming. No visual stimulation, 3 to 8 hertz. Creeping terror, distress, and coldness. 8 to 12, sense of asphyxiation and claustrophobia. 12 to 38, temporary loss of sight and hearing with the exception of sporadic audio visual visions, most commonly containing flashing pairs of lights, 17 motion, and indiscernible echoing sounds. Gamma, suicidal urges, madness, often leading to cerebral hemorrhage and death, complete and overwhelming sensory hallucinations, frequency higher than 42 hertz will consistently result in death of subjects that have inhaled shadow dust. And back. Psycho projection images, document drawings, first drawing on the back. Pictures of black background with a few white squiggly lines, some thicker 
or something and nothing more. Second sketch is more elaborate. There are about 20 or so lines horizontally parallel to one another with some having warm coloration, red, orange, yellow, etc. Either all the way through or partially until turning white again. Oh, They're shaped like sine waves with smooth, constant amplitude. Some waves are only uniform up until they spiral out of order and outside the bounds of the drawing. Third sketch is yet more elaborate. Background is still black, but all of the lines are coloured without restrictions. Their mutual spatial relationships feel organised in a fully two-dimensional way, whilst their shapes are more varied in size and proportion. They're still rounded for the most part. Simple geometrical shapes like triangles and squares split in half diagonally are also present, as if emerging from some kind of fabric formed by the underlying intertwistment of multicoloured lines. But the form is purely abstract and doesn't really reference anything from the real world. Fourth drawing is complete blank. Fifth drawing can easily be mistaken for a long lost look work of abstract art. It's a fully coloured three-dimensional painting of water, land or water, or something completely different. Angular shapes of complex geometry placed on it with a great sense of spatial awareness and proportion. The colours are overwhelming as if the painter was compensating for their lack of vividness or others inherits another inherent property, and many lines were drawn multiple times with slight deviations in their dimensionality. You get the impression that the image is supposed to represent something more, but it is difficult for you to discern what. The sixth drawing represents a cold, calculated organisation of shapes with void of artistry on human emotion. A technical drawing, in essence. The, shapes are round, the rounded shapes are predominant again, as well as a few merged tetrahedrons. Colours are uniform in distribution and saturation. This is the first one that features text, a formula that seems to describe properties of the drawn reality and relate them to our own. The seventh drawing is unfinished, being only about one third done. It's a chaotic amalgamation of all the other previous works, containing spirals, triangles, half written formulae. Its incompleteness doesn't have a sense of drawing direction you're familiar with. Instead, there are many holes in the composition. Excuse me. There are certain spots just lack colour, while there are other spots are completely blank, and there's no discernible pattern to any of this. Drawing makes no sense to you, and it also appears to be the last one in the folder. Early collection. This folder contains numerous drawings by various individuals, ranging from simple black and white sketches to colourful portrayals of mind bending objects, worlds, or purely abstract concepts. Rounded, wave-like or spiralling lines pervade the imagery, and triangles, pyramids or tetrahedrons, depending on the dimensions featured in common motifs. There are a few notable ones. A transparent submarine dripping with black, slimy mass, beams of light illuminated from the deck below, dark below. A human figure cutting a monolith depicted as being laid down horizontally on the floor. There is a black smoke rising from it and filling the room before falling back down as specks of dirt, dust. Some strange flying machine with large wings speeding through fog. Its dimensions and other properties are written next to it. A man and a woman with their hands reaching up, tentacles emerge from below and hold them by their legs. The anatomy of a woman with some unknown markings on her vital organs, her skin is coloured green. Contemporary collection. This folder contains numerous drawings by various individuals, most of them disturbing in form and content. They feature twisted perspectives, strong colours that bleed into another, one another, serpents and other sinister looking creatures devouring or simply slaughtering humanoid beings, as well as creatures of other kinds. Some of these drawings contain formulas, occult rather than scientific, regarding things done to flesh that is often featured next to these inscriptions, drawn in one way or the other. Uh, some are more notable than others. Human reptilians driving spears into a hairy, muscular, four-legged creature. They are in the middle of an endless pool of blood. Some constricting various objects, people, machines, cities, celestial bodies and things greater, often titled as Sormir or Flotsam, or more commonly Flotsam. Vortex of some kind, dark scented and surrounded by people both alive and dead. All of the living ones are bowing deeply, but the one who's sprinkling some kind of black dust over it all, dead and never whole. A neuro mapping SSRP or something? Dark screen turns slowly purple. Colourful and detailed spiralling shapes of mathematical perfection begin to appear in the middle of the screen, becoming more and more concentrated in the very centre until the symmetrical image finally gains form. The shapes repeat in different configurations and are self similar composed of smaller identical or almost identical shapes to itself, diminishing in scale to apparent infinity. The text underneath the image indicates that the image is being rendered in real time from some kind of mathematical function, and you're given the option to zoom further in. You zoom into the centre. The macro shape outgrows the screen and reveals its fractal composition, whose constituents then again grow larger and radiate away as you zoom in. The colours change and shapes reconfigure, and the longer you stare at the infinite centre, the more it feels like you're descending into new realities, losing sight of the previous obvious patterns and building blocks. 
From purple vastness you fall into a spiring azure sea whose surface has formed the more of the universe that swallows you and squeezes past you past the bright stars and into the quasar containing a layer of slithering green serpents, between which clouds of glistening dust conceal scorching pits of rock, molten rock forming on an iced island in which lush orange vegetation homes and swarms of yellow thousand-legged insects crawling around the monstrous black queen. This single compound eye reflects floating polyhedrons between the cosmic arcs of lightning wreaking havoc that disintegrate reality and funnel it broken into a spiraling singularity, which is in fact a great serpent. You can no longer zoom in. Um, so now the demos are back and exit. Delightful. Wasn't that fun? So, there's not much left to do. We've got, actually, we've got more bullets here. 8.6 mil, okay, control. But, um, close that for some reason. I'm not sure what my reasoning is at the moment, but it's there. Let's go to this computer. Welcome to Bridges, some available servant, no available servant documents, Shadowlith Archive. This is a collection of collaborative scientific notes, reports and papers on Shadowlith recovered forming following shadow emission LEAD one two nine which wiped out most of the data in the special laboratory database. This collection is in complete and provides limited corporeal insight into the most basic interactions between Shadow Lith and our reality. It should only this serve for archival purposes. Discovery. The Black Monolith was first uncovered at the Abyssal Excavation Site 6. Exact year and date unknown. Closest estimate between LEBD 20 and 30. Several years after the construction of Abyssal Station 0, the Monolith is a 3 metre tall deep black structure in the shape of a hexagonal prism augmented with pyramidal frostrum at its top and bottom. It's composed of material so dense it required four heavy sublifters to bring it to the station. At 108 tons, its density was calculated to be. Looks like either 30,016 grams per centimeter cubed. But that seems a little bit excessive, but. Transporting it from the manufacturing dome requiring required reinforcing the door with RG panels and using super lubric mats to eliminate friction when pushed by strong mat. Composition test number 142, slide, uh, brackets 143. The test was performed after an upgrade to the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscope module in the hopes that it will finally allow us to determine the molecular structure of a black monolith after numerous failed attempts. To our dismay, but sadly consistent with all our previous tests, this 212 gave us no results. Black monolith is impenetrable to all our instruments and pervious to all tools with which we've tried to obtain samples. In agreement with Dr. Marson, we're ceasing all attempts at further testing the monolith's physical properties until means to obtain samples are provided. We will instead focus all of our research on the shadow waves. Dr. Leaf Bot. Shadow waves. A shadow wave is a transverse wave radiated by the black monolith during which during its first half period exhibits measurable physical interactions. Positive extensity but no measurable interactions during its second half period, negative extancy. In normal set conditions, the change between positive and negative extancy occurs at the frequencies of approximately 0.2 Hz, meaning that the wave completes one full cycle in 0.4 Hz, with an average wavelength of 16 microns. Points where ex extancy states come to an end are called shadow wave extancy limits, or more specifically, negative and positive extancy limits for each of the respective states of interaction. The extent to which the shadow waves interact with material reality is not yet known. But so far we've measured the more obvious electromagnetic interactions. The effects of shadow waves on electromagnetic fields by Dr. E. Herman Sigmason. Some weak nuclear interactions, radioactive decay at shadow wave extancy limits, Dr. Tarbin Voringer, and some strong nuclear interactions. Quark chromodynamic perturbations at shadow wave extancy limits, Dr. Storr of Oivander. Unaccounted for increases and decreases in mass at extensive limits have also been measured, but due to its inconsistent manifestation and magnitude, we've yet to draw solid conclusions with respect to gravitational effects of the wave. Whew. Most of the, these perpetu perpetu uh, 
perturbations and otherwise unexplained phenomena occur near or at extancy limits. Whereas during positive extancy and the shadow wave carries energy in the form of regular electromagnetic wave, starting at the negative and ending at the positive extancy limit of that period, in a somewhat predictable fashion, depending on the properties measured, how the energy is carried from positive to negative extancy limits for all intents and purposes, how the wave comes into existence again, and why and how these limits, which can be represented as fields causing these interactions, manifest in space is yet as known. What is clear is that changes in this electromagnetic component wave during positive extancy of the shadow wave is conserved throughout its negative extancy, meaning that it is without a doubt the same wave that it alternates between affecting and not affecting physical reality, as all of our research suggests, in quite possibly all of its fundamental aspects. The electromagnetic wave, which we've studied the most of all interactions, exhibits an unusual kind of elliptical polarization defined by Holdenson's disjoint function. Informally, it's been dubbed the serpentine polarization as its graph representation bears the likeness of snakes spiralling through space. All attempts at polarising the wave in any way have proven unsuccessful, as the wave will be repolarised as soon as the shadow wave enters its negative extancy, meaning that after passing negative extancy limit, the EM wave will again have serpentine polarisation. Shadow wave manipulation by Dr Gustav Maassen. So far we've determined that shadow wave can be partially manipulated through changes in the electromagnetic field during positive extancy. This means giving a wave energy, more energy at appropriate extancy limits. We can, for instance, change its frequency in a manner that is consistent with our understanding of the laws of reality. However, this also produces amplified and so far unpredictable quantum effects at extancy limits, both positive and negative, depending on how the wave had been manipulated and the medium through which it passed. Shadow waves can be directed through space by guiding them into Orion tubes of massive magnetic field shapers, shaper at the base of the Model F. In these tubes we can shoot photons at specific intervals, aiming for either negative or positive extancy limits so that we may study the resulting quantum interactions. The consistency of Heinlein's law in electron-positron annihilation near negative extancy limits by Dr. E. Hermann Sigmas. The process can be dangerous. If too much energy is introduced, which has resulted in two accidents already, the controlled wave manipulation has, at its at positive extancy limits will create relatively stable changes in the wave. What quantum interactions occur at negative extancy limit? So like the creation of new particles, actual and not virtual, is currently beyond the scope of our understanding. Object negation experiment number five. Object in space. The experiment was conducted to test the hypothesized complete negation of objects from reality with PSWB, phased shadow wave beam technology. The object used for this experiment is a standard side pseudo brass cup suspended in an MO5 testing sphere. By channeling the shadow wave through the two 5.3 meter lot 5.3 meter long Orion tubes and introducing increasing, using Sigmundson's resonance function, amounts of energy at every positive extancy limit, we are able to achieve the desired frequency of 67.5 Hz for both waves. One wave is then continuously phase shifted in the range of 175 to 185 degrees whilst PSWB is being focused on the cup. After the darkening effect, shadow photons and the darkening effect, Dr. E. Heyman Sigmundson, has been achieved, another energy surge is needed to completely negate the cup from existence, a process which occurred in less than 0.15 seconds. The experiment, besides proving the negation hypothesis, also proves Botten's principle that strong chemical bonds will ensure that the whole objects will be affected. In conclusion, the fifth test was a complete success, the only losses being the two Orion tube and one MO sphere, O5 sphere. However, these could hardly be called losses, not because of the relatively small cost of the equipment, but more so due to the fact that changes in their chemical structure and the formulation of these unknown liquid crystal compounds will provide our team with new studying material. Dr. Michael Bain. An anamorphic disk. Today we receive, revealed something, received something called an anamorphic disk. It is supposedly capable of cutting the black monolith. It came in an external shipment, the details of which are oddly kept away from all of us, lowly engineers. At first glance, it's a rather unimpressive rubbery disc, 20 centimeters in diameter, and 1 centimeter thick, grey in colour and of rust, rough texture, made out of some unknown th synthetic material we were explicitly instructed not to scan, and to keep in cryo except during use. This thing is something no sane person would see as a cutting tool, let alone as something that could damage an object as impervious as the black monolith. However, after doing some testing at the shop, we now view the anamorphic disc in a completely different light. Disc arrived with a Cetus SG88M large diameter grinder on whose end it is to be attached, which frankly gives it a comically disproportionate appearance. Speaking of comical, we really expected to believe that such a primitive tool as a mechanical grinder with a rubber gasket at its end will achieve what most the most technologically advanced lasers and plasma cutters at our disposal can't. These thoughts went through all of our minds, and then we fired the thing up. 
but in the span of a second, the disc flattened whilst tripling in diameter, its grey colour becoming much lighter in its shade. In this state, the disc could cut anything we tested it on. Pseudo brass steel, all the way to the stronger alloys and minerals. Even G5 rated diamond, and did so with little resistance. Will it cut the monolith? That would be its ultimate test. We were instructed to modify a strongman to use the grinder and ensure that it's capable of performing the cut, taking all the potential variables into account. No idea how they came up with those, but what do I know? I'm just an engineer. Hopefully the cut will be performed tomorrow, after which I'll file another report. Chief Station Engineer Boris Grayson. Back. Back. Exit. Quick save. Let's take some more buffalo milk. That's more computers. Another great effusion. Why do I not? Why do I? There we go. Let's get that. Strong my head. Strong my head. Okay. Let's touch this thing quickly. To merely call the monolith dark would not be accurate. Its blackness is not merely the lack of reflected light, but emptiness in every way. Its space is not vacant or filled with dark substance, but rather it feels as though there's not even any space there. It's more like a tear in space-time, or maybe a tear in reality itself, revealing the nothingness beyond. At the same time, the monolith does appear as if it has some sort of existence itself, and its existence seems clearer and more fundamental than everything else around it. The corner seems to have been cut off, giving you a glimpse inside the monolith. A side of endless expanse is populated by dim purple, bluish, and reddish light, sparsely lit by white particles, all swelling endlessly without the aim, without aim in fine purple mist through the black void. Let's touch it. it feels smooth to touch. It's neither cold nor warm. You scramble up the slippery monolith until you can just reach the cut part. Slowly insert your fingers inside, but immediately withdraw them due to searing pain. You slide down in panic and inspect your hand. Eesh. Leave it be. Brutal. So, let's do what we said we were going to come and do. We have the acorn. Oh dear. at all. Where are we? We move. Let's do the sprinting thing. Void creature. Yay. Where the hell are we? There. Let's just keep on rolling as hard as we can. Yet to be able to get to us. Jesus wept. I hate all this. We need to get the hell out of here. Might be able to activate sprint again before we leave. I 
little bit of void rot. Okay. Let's get out of here. Right. Let's just run. Now, in an anticipation of having problems, I did transfer, or needing a quick getaway, I did transfer all of our stuff into from box into the submarine. So we can just run the hell away. Console, main controls, Swifus. I'm going to hope and assume that we can get out of here without too much of a problem. Okay. Just a kilometre under. Well, I had I did have some slight warning of what was going to happen there, but should be a beacon here, but everything's dark. There's a lot of dust particles in the water though. Fifty-five meters. <laughs> Come on. Two hundred and ninety meters. Two twenty-four. One seventy-two. Nearly there. Still quite a way down though. One hundred and nine meters. Feeling safer now. Something that's going to get us fifty-four meters. Okay. Okay, let's get back in the submarine and we'll we'll collect our stuff. Okay, so I'm going to transfer all of the stuff to our delightful little boat, and then we will um, then we will drive back to the professor, and that will be hopefully potentially the uh, this stage of the game done. So thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. If not, don't worry about it. Thank you again, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.